I know I've fallen behind in getting a Q&A video out. I like to do it monthly and it's just always kind of hard for me during the summertime. But in the last Q&A, which I think it's probably been about a month ago, I had promised you a part two. And maybe about a week from now, you'll see the rest of them in another Q&A. And finally, here it is. The next questions are from the vegetable garden that we made video. Uh, Karen says, I have a question about your garden. How do you keep the deer and other wildlife from eating your vegetables? And how long will it take your grapevines to produce grapes? Uh, you know, I'm not sure on the grapevine or the grapes question. I am thinking, you know, in a, maybe next year we'd get some grapes, hopefully. I'm uh, pretty sure we won't get any this year. They're just small little sprouts so far, but I can't wait until we do. I love fresh grapes. Uh, we like to juice them. And then the question about keeping the wildlife and the deer out of the garden. So far, I don't think we've had too many issues with deer, but we had a family of groundhogs. And I, you guys know how I like animals and wildlife. And it was so hard for me because I even had some names for some of the groundhogs. Like I had a Sadie. She actually lived under the, the shed here. And note that I'm saying she did live here. Like she's no longer. Uh, John got rid of some groundhogs. She actually had a family down there. Uh, cute little groundhogs running around, but they ate all of our lettuce. I think we got one meal of lettuce and they trimmed down all the strawberry plants and you just really can't have a garden and groundhogs in the same area. So I just, I try not to, I try to block it out when I know that he's, you know, hunting them or shooting them, but I totally understand like we have to do that. So. Uh, that's kind of what's happening with that. Otherwise, we haven't had too many issues with other wildlife. I think it's been mostly the, the groundhog family. Uh, the next question here is, have you ever seen where you attach a small bulb planting auger to a drill and then you auger your holes for planting vegetables? Um, I tried it the first time this year and it was fantastic. Um, it's like having a tiny tiller to make each hole. Uh, we've talked about that because I watch Garden Answer all the time and they have these big augers they use for their planting and we could never do that here because we li literally live on rocks. Like I know we just hit rocks all the time. Now maybe a small hole for little vegetable plants, maybe, but I think that would even be pushing it. But it always looks so satisfying. I'd love to live somewhere where you'd be able to do that. Uh, the next question here is, please show us pictures as your vegetables begin to sprout and continue to grow. Uh, just one question, why did you not plant tomatoes? I love the idea of a grape arbor. We did plant tomatoes, I just hadn't done it in that video that I showed, but yeah, we have some really healthy tomato plants, thankfully. Uh, when I saw you reaching down to clean out the pond, she's talking about the pond back here, um, do you ever find anything that you might not want to find? Snakes? I bet the frogs would love it, and even turtles if you had them. Uh, thank you for taking us on your tour and good luck with your vegetable garden and the grapes too. Well, thank you for that. And yes, it's it's kind of a, I have to talk to myself as I'm reaching down into the pond to get rid of some of the leaves and the muck underneath. Um, I've already reached, you know, and gotten a handful of leaves where a frog was with them and it kind of slithered out of my hand and I love frogs. They don't really bother me that much, but if you're doing that, you're thinking of slithery worms and snakes and stuff. It just, everything kind of feels that way to you. But I just try not to, it's kind of a mind thing. Like I said, I have to just kind of block out what I'm doing and just get the job done, I guess. And there goes another one. <laughs> well, I try not to think about it. I often tell John, as long as you get them in that first shot, like they don't suffer or anything. Angie says, do you turn off your pond's pump at night? Uh, do critters like deer and raccoons come around to drink from the pond? Your property is lovely. Well, thank you. No, I never turn the pump off. It's actually running all the time. It's one of those pumps that doesn't take a lot of, it's like an energy efficient. It doesn't take a lot of electric, thankfully. And then as far as raccoons, we had a raccoon family that walks through here and washes their little paws in the pond and they're really cute but they're so destructive too. I It's something that should, normally we just, we kind of trap them and just relocate them. We don't normally shoot them but um, it should probably almost come to that because we're, sometimes it just feels like they're overtaking our property here. You know, I had one in the house here recently so it's probably time to get rid of them. And the bottom comment here is, all I see are weeds as the pasture comes back to taunt you. Weed cloth is your best friend, believe me. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with that. And we have so many weeds. Like, I was prepared for this. Like, a new garden is just going to be, there's going to be lots of weeds trying to make their way up again. And we've really dealt a lot with weeds. Like, a lot. So, it's, it's just hard to keep it weed-free. 
And I did do a section where I put some weed cloth down the area where I have like melons and cucumbers, some of the, the vine plants. But I think uh, as the years go by, hopefully it'll get better with that. The next questions are from the shed here that I had fixed up. Uh, what a sweet transformation of your she shed. I would spend most of my time there, I think. Do you ever have any slithery creatures crawling through the windows when they're open? Um, I don't think I've ever dealt with slithery creatures. Now, I do get... The worst thing this spring was... It's kind of sad, actually, but somehow bumblebees got in here. Like, even with the windows closed, I'm not sure where they came from. Like, are there sections in the roof where they could have crawled in? But I kept finding dead bumblebees in here. And then I just started leaving a window open for them so they wouldn't be trapped in here because I didn't get around to, you know, checking it every day. But uh, there's definitely lots of bugs. You probably see them flying around here. Mosquitoes and, uh, you know, it's back here in the woods and you're just going to have that. But so far, nothing too, too major. Uh, Mary Elliott says, Mary, are you a runner? How do you stay so thin? Um, I actually do run. Yeah, I enjoy trying to go on a daily run um, I have we have lots of hills around here so I get elevation with that too I don't like I feel I don't have to go as far and still get the a good cardio in with the hills that we have our next question here is what made you name your business and channel the white cottage company is it because you like the cottage look or was it something specific you had in mind I do love the cottage look like even some of the cottage core things you see on Pinterest these days I don't know if you guys follow that or not some of them I don't really like that much, but some I do, like the little florals. And uh, if I envision a, you know, white cottage, I think back to some of the things even my grandparents maybe had in their houses, like these cute little white cabinets with enamel tops and uh, pretty, you know, china dishes and maybe some floral wallpaper to line the shelves with. And and, and I know when I picked that name, I had the Etsy shop first. Actually, I wanted something that would kind of take everything in like I knew I wanted an Etsy shop that would have you know decorations and kind of home decor things you know in it and I thought you know white cottage company I think that would kind of include all of those things and little did I know at the time that we'd actually end up having literally building two white cottages in the future you know I didn't realize that at the time we always kind of dreamed of having something like that but we just never thought it would happen and it actually did like it's uh it's pretty amazing and I still have plans like I'm it was so much fun you know building two little cottages like that but I always tell people you know you can't what I have in mind you can't really produce it has to be old to begin with and then kind of repurpose maybe and made pretty again like if you build something new you can't really um, incorporate that charm that an old place like an old cottage would have and I always tell John, my dream, my vision would still be to find a little old house somewhere that could actually would be small enough that it could be moved. And I'd love to move it up there where the other cottages are, kind of over towards where the orchard is and set it there in the middle of the orchard and call it maybe the orchard house or something like that and repurpose it. I think that would be so much fun. But first, of course, I'd have to find a little house and then persuade John to actually do that because he's more like he, he likes, he enjoys creating, building things, but he likes if they're new. Whereas I enjoy taking something old and turning it into something beautiful. So I guess that got kind of long there to answer your question. And I love white. Like I, you guys know I like white. You know, of course, I paint a lot of my furniture white and our walls are mostly white in the cottage or in the house. And it's just... Um, it's so easy to, I just, again, envision some houses from my past, like maybe grandparents, friends, cousins' houses. You know, we were, you know, of course, Amish at the time, so a lot of the walls were white. And it was kind of encouraged to have white walls back then if you were Amish. But I just remember some, you know, planked wood floors and uh, just kind of, not minimalistic, but kind of simple decorating styles and um, it just I'm really nostalgic about that I still remember places you know rooms that I would see as a little girl and already I love that look of the farmhouse the cottage charm that kind of goes with that uh, Elizabeth says do you have heat in there during the winter she's talking about here in the shed I have a little heater that I can move in here at one point a couple years there I had started seeds in here you know in February already so of course I needed this to be heated um, it's kind of hard, though, with the old windows to keep it warm enough, but it's doable. Uh, Laura Green says, I love how the deck floor boards turned out. Great idea to spray them. Did the clear coat help the boards not feel so rough? 
um, they yeah it actually kind of helped with that but we mostly or I did it mostly to you know offer uh, protection from the elements like the rain and I notice when it rains like it forms like drops on the boards it doesn't really soak in so I think that did a good job of protecting the boards and the bottom comment here is Karen saying just amazed how you refuse to wear protective gear to protect your eyes feet etc I guess you're taking a risk and praying nothing happens good luck um, I don't feel like I'm ever taking any risks I guess it's just the way I think and often I feel like if I'd be running for all that stuff all the time I wouldn't get anything done but I realize it's probably not like I guess we all have a brain that tells us you know like let's just use common sense if somebody feels they should wear that and just protect them at all costs all the time you know that's fine it's I guess we it's each to his own but I never feel unsafe here at home ever uh, the next questions are from the porch the front porch makeover uh, Barb says would you ever consider doing a book with pictures of plants and flowers you could co-author with your sister that's funny you mentioned that because yeah we have talked about that already both of us I yeah I think it's something I would enjoy doing or I would especially uh, sky lily says do you ever get birds in the sink just curious uh, no I've never had a, a bird in the sink but we do have a tufted titmouse that is mentally insane I think she has been or he I'm not sure what it is but um, I had a mirror hanging you know above the fountain there and the spring he started just attacking that mirror I don't know he probably thought it was another bird in there of course but I ended up taking the mirror down it got so bad like weeks on end this bird would just continue doing that even lost its tail like it it would I feel it's even skinnier than it should be it's like actually you know working too hard or whatever but then if I take the mirror down he'll just go to the windows and it's it's been yeah we've had big issues with that uh, to the point where John actually thought we should probably just get rid of it it's like a you know it's not he's not normal but I just feel bad because he I like his song I hear him singing and but yeah just today I heard him again flying against the window and then when I took the mirror down I felt like he wanted revenge if that's possible that a bird would think that way but he went out on the Japanese maple tree right in front of the house there and I watched him he sat on one of the branches and kept picking leaves off and throwing them on the deck floor like just one by one all these leaves scattered on the deck floor uh, Lori says I miss seeing MB I hope she's well maybe a boyfriend oh she's still around here she might just not have been in a recent video I mean she was probably since this video but and she does have a boyfriend his name is Mike and I would say it's probably been a year and a half to two years maybe that they've uh, been seeing each other uh, Jane says I'm wondering what you do with the potted lilac and the dogwood over winter you know I wasn't sure do I want to try to keep them in the pot during the winter month because I did think I could plant them outside this fall and they'd probably be okay you know, in the ground but um, part of me wants the challenge or kind of yeah just to see what would happen like can they survive in a pot during the winter months I've had hydrangeas that I've done that with uh, Angie says how old are your kitties girls or boys has Pebbles always been a cat, lap cat I'd love to see a video just about your kitties I could probably make a whole video of just them like they, they're so funny some of the things they do but uh, Pebbles is a girl and she is eight I think around eight and Twinkle is a boy and he is 14 ish I believe and the bottom comment here is not negative or anything Karen says the blue is a winner she's probably referring to the blue colors that I put on the porch swing I also love it I was kind of afraid I wouldn't because it was kind of out of my normally I go with green you know so blue was a little out of my comfort zone but I I really like it and the last questions are from the deck makeover video the back deck uh, Janice says sorry if I missed it but did you explain how well you liked or didn't like the technique of spraying on the deck stain versus rolling it it looks very nice I'm hoping to try it definitely definitely spray it on I yeah did both ways I, I might not have explained in the video I probably should have but it took a lot more if I rolled it on like I could just do a little area and then I was out of stain like it took a whole gallon for just a little area and if I put it in my sprayer I was able to just do the whole deck almost with one gallon and it was just so much easier so I definitely advise you to spray it on uh, Jane says I'm curious will you be overwintering the shrubs in the pot so I guess this is almost the same question as for the front porch but yes I I might try to do some of them over winter not quite sure I'll probably think about it maybe do some research because I don't want to lose them uh, Gaylene says where did you get the pergola that is from Lowe's 
Uh, Joe Meyer says, what about rain on everything? She's probably referring to some of the cushions back on, you know, on the back deck. Thankfully, our furniture now is better in the weather than what our old one was with those saturated cushions that we always got. But um, I try to keep our, like the pillows, the throw pillows I have displayed on the, the wicker furniture. I try to keep those in the little box that I had showed you guys that I, um, that are, that is from Amazon. And then for the patio furniture pillows, I try to if I know it's going to rain, I just, you know, flip them up so that they're not just lying flat to, you know, catch all the raindrops. And the bottom comment here is power wash your rug. That's actually a good idea. We don't have a power washer ourselves, but I'm sure Mark wouldn't mind if I borrow his, but I guess it's too late for that. I did scrub it on my hands and knees and I got it relatively clean actually, so it kind of worked, but it would probably have saved me some time to use a pressure washer. And I believe that is all. That run is so loud back there. So I guess that pretty much concludes all of the questions for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. As always, I hope your day is going great and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.